Yes, sir. Randy Couture is back in the UFC. What's going on? What's up, y'all? It's the MMA analyst back at it again. Um, still fresh, fresh off that uh, that Rashad Evans overhand right monster smash uh, on Liddell's chin. Damn. Um, but that's not what that ain't what we're here to talk about. No. Um, <clears throat> a lot of people, you know, talking about. Randy Couture, he's back. He's back in the UFC. I was I was talking every day to different people saying, I really don't think Randy Couture will ever fight MMA again. Not even whether he fight in the UFC or not. I just didn't think he would ever fight again. Um, I really thought that he was going to stick to his, you know, his guns or whatever about uh, not fighting in the UFC. And then I also realized that the UFC contract that he signed, you know, he wasn't going to be able to get out of that. He can't just say, I don't want to be in the contract anymore. Let me leave. I mean, he signed the contract, um, really, he, you know, he broke the contract, and they basically said, that's not going to work out, you got to stay, you got to stay with us, or you're not going to fight anywhere else, so I figured he's getting older, he, he, you know, he's, you know, he's definitely fought a long time, I figured, I guess we're just probably never going to see Randy Couture fight again, definitely not against, you know, Fedor Emelianenko in another organization to, to 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 be the potential biggest match in MMA history. I know Dana and Zufa wasn't going to let that happen. So I was like, damn, you know, unfortunately, Randy has probably fought his last fight in the UFC. He walked away with the belt. You know, if that's what he wants to do. That's what he can do. He wants to make movies and uh, show his acting skills. Skills. I don't know if any of y'all saw that movie, but... Uh, Hmm. He's a better fighter. He's a much better fighter. Uh, but anyways, he's back. Randy Couture is back. Uh, he's back, and he's got some. He's got potentially the toughest years, however many may be left ahead of him, than he ever had. Um, and, and let's let's go right from the top. Randy Couture is back in the UFC, and he's back fighting Brock Lesnar. Now. I don't like to speak about conspiracy theories or anything like that. I know everything is about money. That's what everybody cares about. That's what Dana wants most. That's what Zufa wants most. That's what the shareholders, whoever they may be, the Fatita brothers, that's what they all want most. Money, you know, money. I get money. I, I, I get it. That's what they want. They want to sing that song all day long. So the biggest match for uh, Randy Couture to, to be a part of in the UFC at this point with all the heavyweights in the UFC, with potentially all the fighters in the UFC. So that's including, you know, a, a potential match with a lot of the light heavyweight guys that can make heavyweight. The biggest potential money maker for for Dana White in the UFC and Brock Le and Randy Couture himself is a fight. Got ahead of myself against Brock Lesnar. Um, so that's going to make him the most money. It's also going to probably prove to be one of the biggest tests. Not the biggest test. The biggest test still comes later. Um, but let's let's stick right on Brock Lesnar for a moment. Brock Lesnar. The UFC signed him. They gave him $250,000 in his first fight in the UFC. Big, big money. Big draw. He brought all his WWE fans over. He brought his tattoo on his chest that many would say looks like uh, a penis. Um, but he brought it all. Um, he came in the UFC, he's a big money maker, the second biggest pay-per-view in UFC history is Brock Lesnar versus Frank Mir. Um, I mean, what can we say? The dude, the dude is, is a draw. Dana White knows this, but at the same time, he also knows that Brock Lesnar is still considerably or relatively young. He's 30 years old, maybe 31. If Brock Lesnar's taking this thing serious, I mean, he could be taking it serious like, let me fight five times in the UFC, let me make, you know, $1.25 million, that'll be easy, just off, you know, whatever, my pay-per-view kickback, you know, maybe make, you know, a good couple million, like maybe five, six million after all the sponsors. Maybe he's saying, let me just fight a bunch of times, maybe get the belt, retire. Maybe he's saying, I want this to be what I do, I'm a fighter now. You know, time will tell. Time will tell. But we know that Dana wants to milk this guy and give him 
the opportunity, all the opportunity to be a UFC heavyweight champion. If he can turn this guy into the next Randy Couture or into the next Chuck Liddell, somebody that can be fighting for the next 10 years for the UFC, you know, maybe a champion, whatever, whatnot, that's what Dana wants to happen. So what do we have? We've got Dana White on one side saying, I want as much money as possible. And then on the other side, he's saying, I want to, to bring up a new breed of fighter. Do I got a hair? Damn, I got a big ass hair, man. All right. On the other hand, saying I, I want this breed of fighter coming up, these new guys, these new guys that are going to make money. Because, you know, Chuck Liddell's not going to be around forever. You know that. You know, the UFC's not going to mention it, but dude's three and four since 2006. You know, he's lost to, to Jardine, Rashad Evans, and Chuck Liddell, and he beat Vandalay Silva. Anyways, these guys aren't going to be around forever. Randy Couture, even if he fights Fedor, he's on his way out. If he could have it his way, he'd fight Fedor, he'd lose, he'd win, whatever it happened, and he'd quit. He'd be like, I'm done, I'm good, I'm good. So Dana White's going to need some new talent that is very, very uh, attractive to the casual fans, and that's what Brock Lesnar is. Is Brock Lesnar attractive to the casual fans if he goes in there and gets submitted five times in a row? No, because then they're like, oh, he's not really all that. He's just a big dude. He's a wrestler. He's going to get owned by all the fighters like he has been, right? But that's not what happened. So what do they do? They put Brock Lesnar up against a guy that can turn him into not only um, a super, super duper star in the UFC, but they also uh, put him up against somebody where he can get the belt, where he can get you know, validation, where he where people can say, this guy's a UFC champion, this guy beat Randy Couture, you know, 150-time heavyweight champion, so they're doing that, at the same time, you know, Dana doesn't want Randy to go, uh, you know, whoop on a few, a, a few UFC dudes, leave, and then uh, go fight Fate or an Affliction, or Dream, or, or Yaranoka on, like, New Year's Eve, I know Dana doesn't want that, so he says, what can I do, we gotta, I think Dana wants, uh, Randy to lose. I mean, it's all about money. Randy winning is money for now, but it could be danger for later. Because if somebody says, oh, man, did you see that fight over with, you know, um, new fighting organization and how they had the big fight between that guy that's supposed to be the greatest in the world and Randy Couture? Everybody's like, oh, man, those guys must be real serious. Those guys are like a a legit organization because right now MMA to most people is UFC. Matter of fact, MMA doesn't even exist to most people. And the UFC is the sport to most people. They don't even recognize that UFC is like NBA. People don't say, hey, man, you know, you want to go play NBA tonight? But they do say, hey, man, so, like, you do UFC? It doesn't even make sense in my mind, but that's the way it is. So Dana does not want the UFC brand, which equals MMA, to have any type of competitors, people who, you know, they can say, man, these guys over here, they're not the UFC, but they put on that massive match between the number one guy in the world and Randy Couture, and potentially Randy Couture got his ass kicked, and therefore all this hype, all these years and years of UFC hype, you know, maybe Dana doesn't want that happening, so I think he's trying to build up a new breed of fighter, Brock Lesnar is one of them, he's trying to usher out the old breed of fighter. Randy Couture is that dude. And I think that's what's happening with with him. He's going to get money. He's going to kill like eight or or nine birds with one stone. He's going to top one stone up in the air and it's going to pop, 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 pop like like the bouncing bullet theory or whatever with that one assassination. I think, who was that? Was that that JFK? I don't know. But all I know is that I think that he's smart. Dana's smart. And I think he's not dumb enough to uh, to let you know dumb things happen to the UFC. All right, that's A. B. What about Nogueira? Yeah, Nogueira came in. He, you know, he beat Herring. I guess that's what you need to do to get a title shot in the UFC, beat Herring. I mean, he was a Pride Heavyweight Champion, so that's cool. I'm I have no problems with that. But Herring seems to be the dude. You beat Herring, you get a title shot. Who else beat Herring and got a title shot? Brock Lesnar. I don't know. I guess that's that's what it is in the UFC. Anyways, he beat Herring, scared the hell out of me, got his face kicked off, and still won the fight. Thank God that he can take a beating, because he took a serious, serious kick. 
gets a title shot, the interim title shot, because Randy Couture has made it very clear, I am never coming back to the UFC. I'm tired of swimming upstream, da 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 they're not respecting me, they're not doing this, la la la, da dee da, I'm out. So he's like, all right, interim, title, Noguera versus, uh, who did he fight? I even forget. Oh, Tim Sylvia, right? Tim Sylvia. Bam. Beats Tim Sylvia, interim champion, Noguera's a dude. Meanwhile, you know, a year-long feud between the UFC and Noguera, battling back and forth. Going into court, not really going to court, but just going into the courtroom, hearing all the stuff. You know, uh, Mavericks dude, he's trying to get dude uh, Randy Couture um, to be part of HD Net fights. Affliction wants him to fight here. You know, Japan organization, Japanese organization wanted to fight there. Meanwhile, you know, Randy Couture is dogging the UFC, and Dana White's you know not really dogging Randy like he like he dogs Tito, but he's still saying what he's saying. All the while, Noguera just wants to fight, and he gets the interim title, and then they're like, man, he's the champion, but nobody really knows who he is, so we're going to try and introduce him to the world through that dumbass Ultimate Fighter show, which I will be watching every single episode, which I have watched every damn episode they've ever had, but I'm tired of it holding up dudes for like freaking a year, you know, Randy Couture, I mean, mean, uh, Quentin Rampage Jackson, nine months because of the TV show. Noguera, he won his fight in February, hasn't fought since, and won't fight until the damn TV show's done. Tired of the TV show's messing that up, but that's beside the point. They say, okay, Noguera, you're going to be on a TV show. You're going to be fighting for the for the interim title, but that really wasn't what it was. It was going to be like the title title against Mir, who would beat Lesnar, right? So no, Lesnar was beat by Mir, and you beat Tim Sylvia. Therefore, you guys are the most likely guys to be our champion since our old champion, Randy Couture, has jetted off and he's doing his thing. So, they got that show all set up, all done, ready to go, recorded, boom. It's going to be starting in like a week. Be there. I think it might even be next Wednesday. I ain't on that. Anyways, now Couture's back. What do they do? <clears throat> Randy Couture, a champion's back. We love him. Hugs, kisses, uh, you know, no homo, possibly homo, but most likely no homo. And... Noguera, you are the interim champion, and your fight against Mir will be for the for the interim champion. And then Brock Lesnar, who has one UFC win and two wins altogether, and he even said that the first guy was a tomato can, and I never even heard the phrase tomato can. I heard can, but not tomato can. And then everybody else used tomato can, so it seems like it's all right. But basically, he said, I fought a tomato can. And so he's got one win over a guy who wasn't even top 10 in the UFC, and he's getting not the interim title shot, but the title title shot. Noguera, the dude who has beat everybody at heavyweight that he could, except for Fedor, is getting the interim title shot against Mir, and then the guy who Mir beat is getting the title title shot against against. Randy Couture, who hasn't fought in like a year because he's been in legal battles battling out with the UFC. Hmm. Does that seem legitimate? No. Now, you know, Dana White said that, you know, that's the beauty about us not having the commissions and and the BS whatever. We don't have to worry about number one contender and all this whatever. We can make the fights that the fans want to see. What does the fights that the fans want to see mean? The fights will make me money, and it doesn't need any legitimacy, and there doesn't need to be any kind of rationale behind it, if fighter A versus fighter B makes me a whole lot of money, but fighter A versus fighter C is legit, F it, because it doesn't matter to us, we can make fighter A versus fighter B all we want, and fighter C can wait around, right now, fighter C is Noguera, fighter D is my next topic, which is Verdum, or Verdum, or however you want to say Fabricio's name. That dude's been in the UFC beating all types of people. Now, he was supposed to get a title shot like a year and a half ago. Didn't happen. Why? You know, because he's not the draw. So they say, oh, well, you got to beat this guy, then you'll get a title shot. Then he beat him, and they're like, oh, mm, whoops, uh, now you got to beat this guy, and you'll get a title shot. So now, Verdum even has in his contract that if he beats his next opponent, which I forget who the guy who the guy is, 
But if he beats his next opponent, Verdun is going to get a title shot. But how does that work now? Because, you know, uh, Randy is fighting um, Couture in November. And then, like in December, Noguera is fighting Mir. And then those guys have to fight sometime in 2009. And then after that is when Verdun gets his title shot. So does that mean Fabricio Verdun doesn't fight until his title shot? And you know, since, the, by the way, the UFC signed a three-fight contract with Randy Couture. So that means after three fights, he can leave, according to the contract. But do you think they're going to have three fights in, in a short period of time or a stretched-out period of time so that by the time he retires, he's 49 years old? I would imagine C. They want to make as much money as they can. They want to have as much hype build up in between. And they want Randy to be damn near arthritis ridden uh, when he leaves the UFC so that when he goes to fight somewhere else, he can't because he's 49 or because he's lost three times in a row, which I'll get to that later. So Verdum is now, what? What is it, you know, does he, what, what am I going to do? Do I get to fight? Do I have to stand around? I'm trying to make money. You know, Fabricio, we want you to fight against uh, Czech Congo in January. We're going to pay you your $65,000, plus if you win, you get your other $65,000, plus if you have fight of the night, you can get another $60,000. You could be making $180,000 in February. Do you want to do it, or do you want to wait for your title shot, which we promised for you multiple times? Then Verdum goes in there, something happens, he maybe loses the fight, no title shot. BS. It's unfortunate that that's the way it is. Verdum, fighter number D, getting the heavy shaft. Getting so much, he should come out to the music shaft next time. Uh, you know, Gentle was the man shaft, and he should come out to that because he's getting shafted. You know, he should be one mad mother. Shut your mouth, right? That's what I'm talking about. So, um, Verdum, he's getting it bad, much worse than Nogueira. Nogueira's still at least in the picture, and then um, Lesnar is getting the the red carpet treatment. Now, moving forward to the next little whatever. What happens if Fedor loses? Uh, Dana White has said that if Fedor loses, I'm sorry, if Randy loses, Fedor will never lose. If Randy loses, um, what happens? Dana said he will not be kicked out of the UFC. Of course he wouldn't, because Couture will still have the pull. He, he's lost many times. He's never stopped him from being a draw in the past, it's not going to stop him from being a draw in the future, but it will stop it from possibly being a draw for that Fedor versus Couture fight. Fedor's undefeated, Fedor's a dude, Fedor's blah blah blah. Randy, he, you know, he just beat Gonzaga, he beat Tim Sylvia, you know, wow if he beat like Lesnar and, and then Noguera, but come on now, these are some tough fights, some tough fights. Um, if he loses again, what happens? Most likely the other fight doesn't happen because, you know, that mystique is no longer there anymore. Now, something I want to bring up is the UFC has something called the Champions Clause. And this is the reason why Fedor didn't sign. And this is the reason why a lot of champions have problems. You cannot leave the UFC as a champion, period. This is means if you're done your fight, if you're done your contract, let's say you got a five-fight contract, and in your fifth fight you're the UFC champion, the UFC says you are still fighting for us for X amount of period. So make three more fights. And and that's that. You can't leave the champion. And that's what Fedor is like. They have it so that I can't leave the UFC undefeated. I have to lose in the UFC to leave. And, you know, he probably is thinking, man, I don't want to fight for the UFC for the rest of my life because that's how long I'm going to be undefeated. So I can't sign that contract. That contract does not have an ending for me. Uh, for others, they don't have much of a problem because champions lose all the time, even when they shouldn't. Uh, Sarah beating GSP, Forrest Griffin beating Jackson, and uh, most likely Rashad Evans beating Forrest Griffin. Not to say that that's the same thing. Just saying Forrest Griffin is probably going to lose that fight. <laughs> Sorry. Anyways, back on point. Um, credibility, again, doesn't matter all that much. The UFC has made a living, has made a living giving people title shots that are going to give them the uh, the most money. 
let's just look at the UFC's most coveted or most uh, prized champion, uh, Randy Couture himself. All right, now, he started fighting in at UFC 13. That was his UFC debut in the tournament. He won the heavyweight tournament. In the heavyweight tournament, he beat a boxer whose UFC career or MMA career, it, same thing, really, because he's only fighting the UFC, was 53 seconds or 57 seconds long. Um, fought one time, came in, got choked out. Good job, Randy. And then Randy went off to beat another guy who had really no... MMA career after 1997. Then Vitor Belfort was the dude at the time. Vitor Belfort was the young up and comer, whatever, whatnot. Now this is why Randy Couture gets so much respect from me because Randy Couture seizes the moment. A lot of people get a chance at something and they f up. You know, like uh, Olympic sprinters, and then and then they they train for four years and then they only got to run for like just under 10 seconds, and they pull their hamstring four seconds into the into the race. That's not Randy Couture. Randy Couture seizes the moment. So they brought Randy Couture in to lose to Vitor Belfort, and he beat Vitor Belfort, and he beat his ass bad for like eight minutes. Then they're like, wow, damn, Vitor Belfort just got beat. He was going to get the, you know, he was going to get the title shot. Well, now Randy Couture gets a title shot. He gets it against Marie Smith. He wins the title shot. And that, my friends, is... The last time Randy Couture, and this is 1997, has ever earned a title shot. Let's just go through the career real quick. And I'm not saying that it means any less for Randy Couture, because he's still the fighter he is. He still won the fights that mattered the most. But in a situation like in boxing, where you have to earn that shot, where you have to earn that title shot, or in any other sport like football, where you have to win throughout the season to get to that coveted spot... Randy Couture has never had to really work to that coveted spot. He was just given the coveted spot. And then, you know, he won. So, he goes in, he beats Marie Smith. Then he loses two fights in a row. Um, not in the UFC. And he actually left his title. He said, okay, I'm leaving the title behind. I'm not in the UFC anymore. I'm leaving the UFC. I'm gone. And three years later, he comes back to the UFC. Three years Three years between fight number one and fight number two. And he comes back in and steps right into a title shot against Kevin Randleman. And he wins the heavyweight title the championship. So then he goes in. He wins uh, some fights outside of Pride again, outside of the UFC again. And uh, he at this point, the, the UFC is not so strict. You know, they're not locking people down to only fighting in the UFC. He actually loses in rings uh, a tournament. That if he would have continued to win, and if uh, Fedor would, could have continued to win instead of getting cut, then they would have been possibly facing each other in, in 2000. They were in the same tournament um, in 2001, and they've never been near each other since when it comes to fighting. Anyways, comes back to the UFC um, after a year, defends his title against Pedro Hizzo. Um, Pedro Hizzo gets an automatic... Uh, title shot again. So this is an example. You know, Pedro Hizzo loses, and his very next fight is a title shot. So then, uh, Randy Couture wins both. Then he fights Josh Barnett. He loses to Josh Barnett, but Josh Barnett tests positive for steroid use. So Josh Barnett's title is relinquished, and. Who gets a title shot? Rico Rodriguez against Randy Couture. Randy Couture loses to Rico Rodriguez. That's back-to-back -back losses. Two losses in 2002 at heavyweight. What happens? He then gets an immediate title shot in light heavyweight against Chuck Liddell. Why? Because it's going to make him a lot of money. He wins against Chuck Liddell. He wins the light heavyweight interim title, and then he fights Tito Ortiz for the title, and he gets the light heavyweight title. Now, a lot of guys, they would have, you know, lost at one spot and then went down a lot, but he took advantage of the opportunity, and he won. So what happens next? He loses to Vitor Belfort in the, the light heavyweight title. Damn. Then what happens? His very next fight after losing the belt is a UFC heavyweight title champion. Fight. Now these are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, like nine fights in a row. 
and they're all for the title. And it's not like he's defending them. He's losing, getting another shot, losing, getting another shot. Between 2005 and 2001, every fight for Randy Couture, win or lose, has been either a title shot or a defense of the title shot, uh, of the title. It's crazy. Anyways, he finally loses the UFC light heavyweight title to Chuck Liddell. Then he goes and he fights Mike Van Arsdale, wins the fight. What happens next? Heavyweight Sorry, another light heavyweight title shot against Chuck Liddell. He just beat, you know, a, a grappler in the middle. Here's your his second shot. He loses to Chuck Liddell. I know this is getting long, but you guys are seeing my point. This Lesnar getting a, a shot after not doing much is what the UFC is built on. He loses the light heavyweight title to Chuck Liddell. And his very next fight, a year later is for the UFC heavyweight title against Tim Sylvia. What does he do? He wins the fight, and I cheered his ass on the whole time. Then he defends his title against Gabriel Gonzaga. Then he goes on his big hiatus, year-long, trying to get out of the UFC. They won't let him. Comes back, and this is where we are today. This has been happening since the beginning of time in the UFC. People get title shots when it's not really warranted. What do you want to do? That's just the way it is. This is why when people say, what's your favorite sport? To me, I'm like, do you, uh, 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 I don't know. Because I want to say it's MMA, but at the same time, it's not run like a sport. Pride wasn't run like a sport. I mean, they had a, they still had like the same problems as much as I loved Pride. You know, why was Fedor Emelianenko fighting Zulu Zinho? Why was Gomi fighting uh, for non-title, non-title belts? Why was his fight against Nick Diaz not for a title? I don't know. I know boxing does the same thing, but we already know what boxing is. It's corrupt. Boxing is almost corrupt. I almost said something that got me into trouble. Anyways, look. That's the way it is, unfortunately. I love it still, but I recognize that this is nothing new. Um, just a few crazy things. Randy Couture had two fights left on his contract before his dispute. Now he's got three. How did that happen? He must be getting a lot of money and, and some freedom that he didn't have before because he's got one more fight. How are you going to fight? Man, I got two fights left. I don't want to fight with you guys anymore. I hate you. I hate the UFC. I don't want to be near him. I got two fights left. I refuse to fight those two fights. No, 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 no. Okay, three fights. You must have got a nice deal. He must have. He must have. Because that doesn't make any sense. Just another thing, Lesnar is like, I don't give a F about Fedor. I don't give a F about Fedor. Lesnar, dude, you are a strong, big guy. But you will get Zulu Zinho by Fedor. You will get Tim Sylvia, Tim Sylvia by Fedor. Do not ever leave the UFC. And if Fedor ever comes to the UFC, retire that day because you will get stepped on. He'll walk up to you. He'll throw five or six hooks, body, head, body, head, body, head. He'll stun you. He'll take you down. He'll choke you out. He'll, he'll, he'll submit you. He'll arm bar you. He'll leg bar you. He will eat you. He will eat you, and he will not even be full. He will go out and still drink vodka that night, and he will not throw up. This dude is serious. Don't talk that foolishness, man. I like Brock Lesnar, even though he's a fool. Even though he's ridiculous and doing all types of dumb, you know, bad guy type, heel type stuff. I don't give a damn, man. I like Brock Lesnar. But you will get smashed. You will get uh, just dominated. Um, Just so many words that could describe the kind of beatdown that Brock Lesnar would get against, uh, against Fedor. Stop that, man. If you think you can beat uh, Fedor, if you act like you don't really care about Fedor, you know what the thing... Wrong. Wrong. That's a damn lie. You will get crushed. (sighs) Randy Couture is back. He's back in the UFC. To be honest, if he's not fighting Fedor right now, I'm happy to see him back in the UFC. I'm interested in the fight. I think it's going to be real tough for him to win. I think this is one of his toughest wins ever if he gets this win. If he gets this win, I will be more impressed than when he beat 
Tim Sylvia. I'll be more impressed than when he beat Gonzaga. I'll be more impressed than when he beat anybody because this is a serious situation for him. He's 15 years older than him. He walks around at 223, and he's going to fight at like 225. Brock Lesnar walks around at 290, and he's going to fight 40 pounds heavier. And not 40 like me pounds, like 40 like rhinoceros muscle pounds heavier. He's going to come in like a rock. And and if you can beat this guy, because he's not like you're a grappler, I'm a, a submission artist. You're not going to be able to Frank Mir your way out of this. You're not going to be able to no Nogueira your way out of this. You're going to have to, like, out-wrestle him, or you're going to have to keep him down, and you're going to have to, like, put him on his back and keep him there and maybe get a topside submission. If you can do this, Randy Couture, my hat is off to you. And then you've got even a harder situation with Noguera. His boxing is better. His boxing is better. Noguera's boxing is great. Both Noguera's brothers, great boxing. So his boxing is better. His grappling is not going to matter because his jujitsu. Is sick. You're not going to knock him out. I mean, you were not going to knock out Noguera. You know what I mean? I mean, you could, but nobody knocks out Noguera. He just gets, I don't want to say it, but he just keeps on ticking. And the first thing he does is takes a licking. And this dude never gets knocked out. So you're not going to knock him out. You're not going to submit him. Um, he's going to outbox you. You're going to dirty box him in the cage in the corner. It's not going to matter because he's just going to look. That's an awesome fight. I really want Brock Lesnar to lose and Randy Couture to win so that I can see Randy Couture versus Noguera. That's the fight I want to see right now. If that happens, and if somehow he gets past Noguera, then they're going to be like, I don't know, Chuck Liddell, go up to 200 and whatever, fight him. We need you to knock this dude out. He can't have three wins and then leave the UFC and go fight Fedor because if he beats first Brock Lesnar, and then Noguera, and then somebody else, maybe a Brock Lesnar rematch, or, or you know, maybe by then Bobby Lashley got signed or something. Who knows? But if he wins those three, and Fedor is still number one, and by then he will have fought a whole bunch of a whole bunch of like cans, you know, like Yaranoka type stuff. But by then he will have beat Tim Sylvia. He will have fought. I would hope uh, Josh Barnett, and I would have, ho- and I hope. He would have fought Andre Arlovski by then. So if he beats, you know, Barnett, Sylvia, Arlovski, already beat Noguera twice, just handling business, and then over here, 47-year-old at the time, near 48-year-old Randy Couture still knocking dudes silly, that fight that we want to see today will be even 100 times more um, compelling then. And that is what Dana White definitely doesn't want to see. He definitely doesn't want to see that. Because that'll be really the Rocky movie. That'll really be Rocky versus like that Russian, that Russian monster, that train, that beast, and that fight will be amazing. And wow. So Randy Couture's back. There's a lot of stuff to talk about. There's a lot of ways this could go. Everything's hypothetical for now. Um, I'm interested. I know y'all are interested. Everybody's interested. The uh, the the biggest pay per view ever will be Brock Lesnar versus um, uh, Randy Couture. Fact. Only fight right now that you can make. Only fight right now where if you said casual fans, because those are the dudes. It's not like 1.1 million hardcore, you know, MMA fans are the ones that buy these. You know, that make people money. It's like the dude that like doesn't want to see the ground game, like. And his girlfriend and, you know, the people who only know the names of three fighters. And, you know, those are the dudes that make the sport successful. Unfortunately, that's the way it is. That's the way it is with everything. The only fight right now that you could make that would be more lucrative than Brock Lesnar versus Randy Couture is Brock Lesnar versus an undefeated Kimbo. That is the biggest fight you can make right now. That's a whole different topic. And just for the record... When Kimbo, a few years ago, lost to a, 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 a cop, Sean Gannon, I think he's from Chicago, they signed Sean Gannon. He got his ass beat quick and hard, but the fact is the UFC signed Sean Gannon for beating Brock Lesnar in a street fight. Now that Kimbo, wait, did that say Brock Lesnar? I'm not sure. I meant to say Kimbo. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm ranting for a while, so I can make mistakes. Anyways, 
So if they're going to sign somebody for beating Kimbo in a street fight, what happens if Kimbo goes 5-0 and in MMA? I mean, they will pick him up with it quickness, and they'll put him in the cage with somebody that he could probably box up, you know, maybe get two easier wins, because he's not going to be able to do what Brock Lesnar did, and then if they could ever make that fight happen, ever, um, that would be the biggest fight that the casual fans want to see, not that I want to see, I already know what would happen, you know what I mean, Kimbo's worst part of his game, his obsolete part of his game, is what Brock Lesnar's made his money doing, he will take Kimbo down and end that fight in 30 seconds or less. But anyways, that's beside the point. I do love Kimbo, no homo. Brock Lesnar, funny dude. Real entertaining. But this is about Randy Couture. Randy Couture's back. I want to see it happen. I'm really glad I don't have to wait long for this. They said, you're back. You're training. Get in that cage November like 15. Get your ass out there and make us some money. Get that ass out there and make us some money. So, hey. I'm loving it. I hope y'all are loving it. I don't know how long this video was. It feels like it was about 25 minutes. We'll see in a minute. MMA, it's important, y'all. It's important. Peace.